Hey everyone, Snowflake is one of the more interesting artificial intelligence stocks to follow. Given how most large language models are based on data, Snowflake's position in the data industry provides a good target for AI stock investors to consider. So here's a few things that I thought Snowflake stock investors should know about the company if they're considering Snowflake for an investment. So let's take a look. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now. All right, so in its most recent quarter, which the company updated on May 22nd, the CFO gave insights into the developments of the company. First of all, revenue grew 34% to $790 million in the quarter. And what was driving that growth was some of their smaller accounts outside of the top 2,000 global businesses. That was a source of outperformance. And looking at the cadence of that growth, uh, there was strong growth in February and March, and then it slowed down in April. The company sees this variability as a normal component of the business. So this wasn't anything of concern for Snowflake. It was just normal for the company to experience this kind of variability in its business. Now, one important thing to remember is that the company said there's signs of a stable optimization environment. That's a very jargon heavy statement. Let me try and simplify that. What optimization means in terms of the way Snowflake means it is its customers looking at how much money they spend with Snowflake and trying to reduce that spending or trying to get more return on investment, paying closer attention, providing a microscope for their spending at Snowflake, looking at it and seeing where can we cut spending with Snowflake? Where can we get more value out of our spending with Snowflake? That was happening a lot more in late 2022, mid to late 2022, I should say. And then it kind of continued in 2023, early 2023, before moderating in middle to late 2023. And now it seems as though those trends have kind of stabilized. Businesses are not looking at their spending with Snowflake with that kind of a microscope anymore. They're not trying to cut that spending. They're not working really closely on trying to get increasing value from whatever they were spending. Now they're, without much hesitation, increasing their spending with Snowflake, increasing consumption. So that's been good news for Snowflake, especially with its larger customers. Larger customers have really meaningfully increased their spending with Snowflake. So seven out of their top 10 customers grew their spending with Snowflake quarter over quarter. All right, the next big thing to consider with Snowflake is the company, like many others, is investing in GPUs to develop large language models and implement artificial intelligence within the business. And its gross margin fell to 76.9% slightly. And the headwinds were associated with GPU related costs as we invest in new AI initiatives. So Snowflake doesn't name NVIDIA as the company they're buying the GPUs from, but given that NVIDIA is the clear leader in this space, it wouldn't surprise me to find out that Snowflake's spending on GPUs was going to NVIDIA for its H100 or the new generation Blackwell chips and Blackwell technology coming out early 2024, getting installed late 2024, calendar year 2024. So that's partly why Snowflake's expenses increased slightly and brought down its gross profit margin. However, given the large return on investment companies are noticing from their investments in artificial intelligence, it would be reasonable to expect Snowflake to get a boost from this spending on AI. Looking at the balance sheet, the company ended the quarter with $4.5 billion in cash. And in Q1, they used $516 million to repurchase 3 million shares at an average price of $173 per share. So at $173 per share, 
Snowflake's management feels the stock is undervalued. That's the main reason why management teams use company funds to buy back shares of stock. Now, I usually say when an individual like, let's say, Warren Buffett purchases a stock, uh, Kathy Wood and others, when they purchase a stock, they have several reasons why they're purchasing a stock. And it's not always just because they feel their shares are undervalued. But when a management team uses company funds to buy back shares of stock, that's a stronger indication of feelings that the share price is undervalued. That's a stronger indication than when an individual purchases for their own portfolio or for the portfolio that they are managing. So the company has $892 million remaining under their $2 billion authorization. So the management team authorized $2 billion to use to buy back the stock. So far, they've used over $1.1 billion to buy back their stock. They have about $892 million remaining. And given that they have a $4.5 billion balance sheet, and given that the company generates sufficient cash flow from operations, I wouldn't be surprised if the share price is at or below these levels and the company finishes this $892 million in authorization of buying back their shares if they increase that authorization further. In more good news for Snowflake stock investors, the first quarter of their current fiscal year has started so good that they increased their expectations for the rest of the year. So they now expect product revenue of approximately $3.3 billion, which would represent 24% year-over-year growth. However, that comes with a bit of a downside as they lower their profit margin guidance because of the increased spending in GPU-related costs related to their AI initiatives. So their revenue outlook, much better than expected for the year, but they're lowering their profit margin because they had to spend more on GPUs than they initially thought they were gonna spend. And this isn't necessarily a bad sign. It might actually be a good sign that management found this opportunity and said, you know what, this opportunity is so good that we should spend more on it, not less. So we initially thought it would be worth it to spend, let's say 500 million, but now we feel like it's worth it to spend 600 million because we're getting such a good return on investment from what you, we've spent so far that we should just increase it because it's a good value. It's a good buy. And when you're an investor of a company that's shown a good history of allocating capital and they find areas to spend more capital to invest in the business, that's typically a good sign from a company that's demonstrated good management of those funds. Now, if you see this kind of behavior from a company like AMC or GameStop, which has a history of ineffective capital spending, then you can be more skeptical and say, why are you spending money on this business? It's not a growth business. You just want to conserve capital as much as you can and try and become more nimble and survive. Don't invest. There's little areas you haven't demonstrated skill in this regard. That's not the case here with Snowflake. Snowflake has been relatively good at investing capital. So as an investor, you don't mind the company allocating more capital to growth initiatives. Did you know that over 90% of the people that watch my channel are not subscribed? It'll really help support my channel if you hit that subscribe button. And oh, by the way, one of the benefits of being subscribed is that I take requests from subscribers more often than I do from non-subscribers. So if you prefer that benefit, please subscribe to the channel.